In the previous video, we created a basic book using HTML and CSS, but it was still missing some crucial things like chapter numbers and page numbers and chapter titles in the running headers instead of just the book title. We can add all these things using generated content. This means that we don't need to find a way to manually add each page number to every page, but instead we can use CSS to magically insert the correct page number. Generated content can be used any time you want to reference content that might change, and it's actually not magic at all. Let's take a look at how it works. We'll start off with counters, which are what control your page numbers. But counters can be used for a lot more than just counting pages. You can use them to create automated chapter or section numbers that you can then add to the beginning of every chapter title or to your running headers. By using counters instead of hand-coded chapter numbers, you can then rearrange your chapters or add new ones, and the counter will always make sure that the chapter number is up to date. Let's head over to our Atlas editing environment to see how to create a new counter. You can see that I've already got some CSS started in here that has the rules that we set up in the previous video, along with a few extra basic properties just to format the text. The first step to creating a counter is to initiate it using the counter reset property. This is a way of saying, hey, I'm going to start counting this new thing, and here's where I want the count to start. We're going to create a counter to number all of our chapters, which means that I want the counter to start right at the beginning of the document. So I've put my counter reset property in the main parent element that contains all of my other HTML elements, and that's the body element. Now I need to add a name for my counter. I'm going to call it chapter number because, as usual, I want it to be descriptive and this is a counter that's numbering my chapters. This is enough to get the counter going. Though, if I wanted to, I could also add a number for the counter to start at. So, for example, if for some reason I wanted my chapter numbers to start at 10 instead of 1, I'd just add a 9 here. This means that the initial value of the counter is 9. Now, I know that I said I wanted the counter to start at 10, but what's going to happen is that ultimately this value is going to increment by 1 every time there's a new chapter and that incrementing starts right off with the first chapter. That means that as soon as that first chapter appears, the counter will increment by 1, making the number for that first chapter 10. The default starting value for all counters is 0, and since I want my chapter number counters to actually start at 1, I'm going to go ahead and leave this value with the default. All right, so now we need to specify what elements this counter is actually counting. We want to count all of our chapters. And as we know, our chapters are all marked up with a tag of section that has a data type of chapter. I'm going to go ahead and add a counter increment property to this selector. And this property lets us say which counter we're incrementing. So in this case, we're incrementing the chapter number counter that we just made up. That's all it takes to create a counter, but we haven't actually specified that this number should show up anywhere. Right now it's just living behind the scenes, but we want to go ahead and add this counter before every chapter title, and CSS gives us a special way to do that. In my document, each chapter is tagged with an H1 element that is a direct child of a section with a data type attribute of chapter. This is a really specific selector, and it'll help make sure that we don't accidentally select any H1 elements that are not chapter titles. Now, CSS has an extra little thing called a pseudo class, specially made for adding content before a block element. I'm going to use the pseudo class to add our counter before our title elements. In the new rule I just created, I'm going to add a content property. And then we'll add our counter as the value for that property, like this. Now, 
we're saying that we're going to be using a counter as the content, and then in the parentheses, we just added the counter name. Now, I also want to add the word chapter before the counter number, and then follow the counter number with a colon and a space so that it looks nice. You can combine multiple types of content within one content property, like this. I've added my static text content around my chapter number counter, and the text is surrounded in quotes, which tells the CSS that this is, in fact, plain text. And that's it. Let's take a look at the result. If we scroll through, we can see that every chapter title is now preceded by that chapter counter along with the extra text that we added. And as the chapters increment, so too does that chapter number counter. If we ever add or subtract chapters from our document, these counter numbers will automatically update themselves so that the current chapter number is always showing. That's the basics for adding counters, and you can add as many counters to your document as want and use them wherever you want. You can also restart the numbering of any counter as many times as you want in your document, which is really useful if you have figures within multiple chapters and you want the figure numbering to start at one with every single chapter. To do that, we'd simply create another counter called figure number. Again, we need to initiate that counter. And then we can add another counter reset value to every chapter. Now our figure numbers will reset to one at the start of every new chapter. One important thing to remember here is that any selector can only have one counter reset property. You can't have multiple counter reset properties like this because if you remember our cascading rules, the property that comes last will override the property that came before it, which means that only the figure number counter would get reset and not the chapter number. Instead, you simply list all the counters that you want to reset in one long line like this. Now, as I mentioned earlier, your page numbers are a built-in counter that you can use right out of the box. The name for the counter is, naturally, page. You initiate your page counter with the first parent element, which you'll remember is the body element. You can then use it on your master pages to insert the current page number onto every page. Let's go ahead and do that. We set up our master page rules at the top of the document. I'll build on those rules to also add the page number to the running headers that we created. Again, I'm going to combine different types of content within the content properties that we added to our margin areas. So here, I'm simply going to say counter page. And then I'm going to add some extra text to separate the page number from the book title. I'll just do a space and a hyphen. We'll do the same thing on our right-hand pages, but instead we'll follow the book title. One extra thing that I want to add is for my page numbering to restart at 1 starting at the first real chapter. My book starts with some extra content like a title page and a table of contents, and I want the page numbering to always be 1 with that first chapter. There are a few ways to do this, but I'm going to do it using one of the selectors that we learned about in an earlier video. I'll just paste in the code that will do this for us. Since I know that the first chapter of my book is directly preceded by my table of contents section, which is tagged as a nav element with a data type attribute of TOC, I can use the direct sibling selector to say that any chapter that directly follows that nav element should restart the page number counter at 1. All right, now let's take a look at our revised PDF. Now if we scroll through our rendered PDF, you can see that at the top of the left and right pages, we have the current page number. 
starting at 1 at the first real chapter. All right, so we've got some automated chapter numbers, and we've got our page numbers appearing on every page, but our running headers still leave a little bit to be desired. You'll remember in the previous video that we created a running header for a book that consisted just of the book title, which we typed into the content property of our margin areas. Here was the text that we typed into our CSS. But instead of having the book title on both the left and right pages, we want to have the book title just on the left page. And on the right page, we instead want to use the title of whatever the current chapter is. We could create separate named master pages for every single chapter in our book, and then just manually type in the chapter titles for each master page. But that would be a pain to maintain, and then what if we change the chapter titles or add new chapters? Instead, we can insert the current chapter title dynamically using strings in just one page rule. A string is like a saved variable that you can use throughout your document. First you decide what elements to save into the string, and then you can just invoke that string instead of adding static, hand-coded text. In our example, we want to save all our chapter titles as an array of values inside a string that we can use in the running header. We know that all of our chapter titles are tagged as H1 elements that are direct children of our section elements that have a data type of chapter. So we can go ahead and use this existing selector to create a string that targets just these title elements. You create strings using the string set property. This property requires two values. First, you need to create a name for your string. Again, this can be anything that you make up, but as usual, I'm making it something descriptive. The next value determines what parts of the element's content should be saved within the string. You remember when we were talking about counters, I showed you that before pseudo class. This makes up one of the three content pieces that you can include. You can include any of that content that you added in the before pseudo class, as well as any content that you added in the corresponding after pseudo class. And then, of course, you can include the content of the element itself. As you can see, each of these values gets added as part of a content value, and you can have multiple content values as needed. For our chapter title string, I just want to include the content in the before element and the content of the element itself. And that's all we need to do to create the string. The content of each chapter title is now saved within this chapter title string for you to use whenever you want. As with counters, we've created our string, but we haven't actually said to use it anywhere. Remember we want to replace the running header text on our right-hand pages with this string value. So let's go up to our page rule. The string content goes inside the content property, like this. You specify that you're about to invoke a string, and then inside the parentheses, you just say the name of the string. All right, now let's take a look at the results. As we scroll through our document, you'll see our book title is still on our left-hand pages. And then the current chapter title is on our right-hand pages, along with that chapter number that we added dynamically using our counters. As the chapter progresses, our running header updates itself for whatever the title of the current chapter is. If we go back to our CSS, you can see that another cool thing this shows us is that you can combine strings, counters, and plain text within the same content value, which gives you a lot of versatility to customize your running headers and footers however you want. There's a lot more you can do with generated content, like creating self-updating cross-references and a table of contents and even an index, 
But hopefully this video gave you a good sense of how you can use counters and strings to take your book content to the next level. With practice, you could be creating complex designs like this one entirely out of CSS without ever having to touch manual layout programs like Adobe InDesign. You can check out the CSS for the sample book that we created on GitHub here.